Well, good morning and happy Friday to you. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm always excited. You know why I'm always excited? I'm always excited because when you know him, I love what the apostle said. I am persuaded that God is able to keep that which I have committed unto him until that day. And so when you know the one who gives you permission to say those words with absolute confidence, assurance, trust, knowing that no matter what's going on, no matter what's happening in the earth, no matter what challenges we face, God is not only, in, God, is, God is sovereign. And this is a post that I put inside the network the other day. And I think it's really important for us to understand these words. God is omnipotent. That means he's all-knowing, he's omnipotent, which means, okay, omnipotent, omnipotence, and uh, so all-knowing, all-seeing, and in all places at one time. When you understand that, then you look at the stuff that's happening in the earth today and you know it's all, it's all, it's all a part of his plan, it's all a part of his timeline. Now, do all the details that transpire, does God wire those details ahead of time? No, but he knows what they are, he knows what's coming, and he's already made allowances for them in the future. So today, I really just want to, I just really, really just want to encourage people today. I want to encourage you to know that God is working all things together for the good of his church. He is working every circumstance together for the good of his kingdom. And I want to talk today also about understanding, looking at the events and, and things as they transpire, looking at them not from the occurrences in the world, not from the situation, but looking at them from the heart of God. Because there are a lot of people who are saying things and they're making, they're making assumptions and they're making insinuations. I, I actually had someone go on my page you know, folks, if, just stay off other people. If you don't agree with what people say, if you don't agree with their perspective, just stay off their page. Just, just move on, okay? But when somebody in the South says to you, oh, bless your heart, oh, bless their heart, it is a subtle insult. It's a way, now, and anybody from the South will usually tell you, when they say, when someone looks at you and says, oh, honey, mm, 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 oh, bless your heart, what they're saying is, is that, good morning, Beverly, good morning. What they're saying is, it's a, it's a subtle insult. It's a way of saying that there's something either about you, your perspective, or um, your way of looking at things. It's, it's, like, it's like there's something wrong. It's like, it's like it's diminished. It's like you're less intelligent or less informed. And that's just not the case. Just because someone doesn't see things from your perspective. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Ray June. Who else I got on? Let's see. Good morning. And so what we're going to touch on today is respecting the fact that in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, there are many members. There are many members and everybody's assignment doesn't look like yours. So if you don't agree with the perspective that, you know, I saw one, one large ministry, huge ministry, and then he's on a page attacking another huge ministry. I'm like, why? Why? Let this guy over here deal with his sheep the way he needs to, the way God tells him to deal with his sheep. And then you go over there with the little five sheep you got and take care of what God has put in your hands. When the, in the parable of the talents, you did the, 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 the ruler gave one five, gave one two, and gave one one. The, the one with five talents did not go to the one with two talents and say, now this is how you need to invest your two. And he didn't go, and the one with the one with two didn't go to the one with the one. He said, well, this is what you need to do with your one. No, God put what, God gave each one of them what he thought they could handle, what he thought they could manage. And so when you look at your assignment, God has given you your assignment. So stay off other people's assignments. Stay out of it. Just leave them alone. Let people do what God has instructed them to do. Now, one of the things that I was, I was really, as I was working on, the, we're working on a, creating a network. And I was sitting here 
working on content for the network. And I'm telling you, the presence of God descended on me. I was just sitting here and just, I'm mean, even now, even now as I'm sharing this information, the presence of God is so thick in my space. Now, why is that so? It's so because I know that right now at this moment in time, I am doing exactly what I'm supposed to be doing, doing it exactly when I'm supposed to be doing. There is such an, a confirmation of the anointing and that is on my life right now because of what God has imparted to me to release into the earth for this moment. So I know I'm doing my assignment. I know I'm doing my job. Now, whether it jives with where you are and what you're doing, that's irrelevant and immaterial because when I stand before the great throne and give an, an, give an answer and give an account for what God put on my life, when he comes back to say, Stella, I gave you your two talents, what you, I'm going to say, Lord, look, you gave me two. I got 50 more. <laughs> you know, that's how, that's how I look at it. You know, because I know that I, what I, my assignment and my skills, when I walk and stay in my lane, it bears fruit for the kingdom of God. So you don't need to take it on yourself to go to somebody else's page and preach them a sermon to somebody who already doing what God has assigned them to do. But now if you want to encourage them and say, yes, I, you know, I bless God for you. I see, I see you month in, month out, day in, day out, post, you know, 10, 20, 50 posts, sometimes a day in different arenas, posting on YouTube, posting on, you know, so, so when you come, so if you can't encourage that, go somewhere and sit down and leave folk alone. If you don't have something good to say, leave them alone. If you don't agree with their perspective, that's okay. It's okay. And just like I posted in another post yesterday, it was a post about the Civil War. I don't remember where I heard this story, but it really struck me. The story struck me because it was a story about a uh, slave. It was actually a slave. Um, uh, he, he, I, I, I don't remember exactly how he was connected to the slaves and how people were saying, they, they were saying, you shouldn't be doing this and you're so evil and you're this and you're that. And he was in this position. He was, I don't think he was an owner. He was in this position and they were condemning him and they were attacking him and they were attacking him. And what they did not know was the reason he stayed in that position was because he was a part of the Underground Railroad. And so while you attacking people for doing their job, for doing doing what you think, you don't realize that that person is, is a hidden, is somebody that God has placed into a position to strategically see things that you don't see. So while they were condemning, while the abolitionists were condemning him and telling him how evil he was and how bad he was and how, how awful he was for, for participating in this evil called slave, slavery, what they didn't realize is that at night he was those very slaves, some of those very slaves that were coming in his camp were being slipped into the Underground Railroad. And and so even though his job didn't look like their job, it's like they didn't realize that he was actually doing more for the movement than they were. So whatever God gives you, whatever assignment God gives you in this era, in this window of time, do your assignment. Do it. Do your, do you, do you, you do you. And if you have some, if you want to encourage a fellow member of the body of Christ, I'm talking about kingdom folk. I'm talking about, if you don't have something to, to, to encourage them, to support them, if you can't go in the privacy of your own space and pray and intercede for them, if you feel like they have missed God and they have missed the window, your words, if, if, let me tell you something about what I, let me tell you something I've learned about social media and I've learned. When a person is bold enough to go on social media and post a position, they are of that persuasion. And you going on their on you going on their post, I learned this. You going on their post trying to tell them to change their position, it ain't going to change. All it's going to do is lock them further. This you just going to lock them further into a twisted position. So if their position is in, incorrect, inaccurate, wrong, blinded, you can't look. If you can, you can stand in your yard all day long talking to a blind man, telling him, "Don't you see that White House over there with the green shutters?" All day long, he will not be able to see it because he is blind. And the Word of God says that the enemy has blinded the eyes. So if you are talking to a person whose eyesight has been blinded, you are wasting your breath. Your responsibility is to not say to the blind man, I'm going, you know, you blind and you can't see. No, you, it's not to say, don't you see? No, your responsibility is to say, Lord, is it my assignment to heal this man? 
and if it's your assignment, then you heal them. But if you, it's not your assignment to heal them, your responsibility is to then go and pray that the Lord would open the eyes of their understanding. Pray that the Lord would expand their capacity to see. Pray that the Lord would move them from vision in a natural realm and move them to envision into an intuitive realm so they can see not just with their natural eyes, but they can begin to see with the eyes of their spirit. And then that will then give them permission to gain access to the supernatural realm where they can partner with the Holy Ghost and then they can begin to see things prophetically that don't exist, that God is all that God is creating in the realm of, of non-existence to bring it and manifest it into the realm of what does exist. That's the real power of an intercessor. So if you don't have the if you don't have the, if you can't do that for somebody, go somewhere and leave them, go somewhere and sit down and leave folk alone. If you can't pray a person, I, what I loved about my mother, my mother was the most amazing intercessor. My her name was Ophelia Payton. I know for a fact that my mother prayed several ministries into their, into because she interceded for them. She did not go for them and tell them what they should do. She did not tell the pastor, this is what you ought to do and this is who you need. No, she went home and when she saw something she did not like or something that troubled her spirit that was happening, she went home and she took it to the throne of grace. She prayed and said, Lord, that is your minister. That is your pastor. That is your, and in the name of Jesus, this is what I see. Now, if what I see is wrong, help me change my perspective. But if what I see is right, then what do you want me to join? Because right now, here's the other thing. So number one, leave folk alone. Next, Here's what you get to do. We get to partner. Je the word of God says that Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding. So literally, right now, the person you trying to tell them what they're supposed to be doing, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, interceding for them right now. He's already praying for them that there are certain things that would transpire. Why not you just shut up and leave them alone and go to Jesus and say, Jesus, what are you praying for Beverly? What are you praying? praying right now for Rajun? What are you praying for Nicole? What are you praying for Tushanda? What are you praying? What are you praying, Jesus? What are you praying for Amanda? What are you praying for Jacqueline? What are you praying? Lord, what are you praying? And then what and what what is so beautiful about an intercessor is the Lord is like it's no it's so few of them. The Lord will say, Well this is what's on my heart for Jacqueline. This is what's on my heart for Nicole. This is what's on my heart for Stella. Will you decree this for me in the earth? Because nothing leaves heaven until a, a, a prayer, a declaration or intercession leaves the earth. So instead of you going on people page trying to tell them what to do, you get with Jesus on their behalf and you take a hold with the power of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and you you make it your business to decree what Jesus is saying for them. If you're serious. Because that's, this is the new, where we are going in this country. We've had people, see, in the United States, we so, we, we're so spoiled. Because we thought we could just go and preach our sermons. And yeah, it's, you're right, Jacqueline. It is not our right, nor is it our responsibility to tell another person in the kingdom of God what to do. Number one, if that person is in order, they've got an overseer. They've got somebody that God has put over them. Yeah, and I do too. I've got great people, amazing people. People who have a global touch, who are looking at the call on my life and helping shape it and guide it and direct it and tell me and give me words of encouragement and texting me and emailing me and posting. And they look, and why, there are people who go and look at my stuff and say, Stella, that was spot on. Stella, there are people, global leaders, who do that for this person because I believe in order. So it's not my, it's not, it's not anybody, if you're not my overseer. And I ain't bringing no money to your church, to your community. You don't need to come tell me what to do and how to do my assignment. The people that I send my money to, those are the people I get permission to come tell me. Why? Because I believe that they care about me. I believe that they are concerned about my, my, my kingdom responsibility, my kingdom accountability. That's who I answer to. And if they tell me, Stella, what you said there, you need to change that, you need to fix that, that's who I'm going to listen to. I ain't going to listen to you. I'm just not. I'm just not, <laughs> especially when I don't sense that you're speaking to me out of your true, genuine love as a leader. When I sense that you're speaking to me out of arrogance, 
if you, bless your heart. No, yeah, I'm calling you out. So, know that. Yeah. So, what should our response be? Number one, don't tell other people what to do. Unless, if the Spirit of God gives you an assignment and says, this is a thus says the Lord, and the Lord told me to tell, like the one I posted yesterday, oh yes, that was a thus says the Lord, where the Lord said, tell my people to stop attacking, tell the body of Christ to stop attacking, to, to attacking the body. That when you are attacking another person in the body, you are a cancer cell. And what happens to a cancer cell? Either what that, that cancer cell has to be removed because it will ultimately destroy the very body that it is a part of. So don't be a kingdom cancer cell. Don't bite and devour. Don't be a kingdom cannibalist. Don't bite and devour the very body that you're a part of. What sense does it make for me to take my teeth, stick my finger in my mouth, and bite my finger off? That's stupid. Yes, you're right, Nicole. It's like casting your pearls upon the spine. Pearl is God's. That is God's valuable thing. It's God's value. So let God deal with If, if there's a pastor, a teacher, a preacher that's out of line or out of order, it's not your job to tell him what to do. God will deal with him, and God has people in the earth. Same thing for governmental leaders. Now, I posted the other day. I didn't vote for Biden. I don't believe his administration will value conservative principles, the church, the unborn, small business, the Constitution, or the kingdom of God. Why do I say that? Because he's already made it known what he's going to do. He's already made it known that, that they're going to expand the abortion across. He's already made that known. So that's why I, that's why I posted what. Now, it says, and I said, I'm going to do for him what I did for Trump. Obama, Clinton, Reagan, Bush 1 and Bush 2. Those are all the presidents I think that I voted for. Okay? So, I'm going to do for him what I did for them. I'm going to pray for them. Now, here's my perspective on prayer. Okay? When it comes to movement and when it comes to the heart of God, when God has an agenda that he is trying to move forward in the earth, there are three options for any person who gets in the way of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Three options. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Okay, there are three options. So the first option, so this is what I pray. And I'm just letting you guys know because this is biblical and it's scriptural. The first option that I pray is that God change their heart. Okay, it is the goodness of God that leads all men to repentance. The word repentance means to change the way you think and to bring your thought systems, beliefs, and values into alignment with what the King of Kings decrees, with the word of God, with this book, this gospel that we preach. That's what, that's the first thing. It's like, God, bring them into agreement, bring them into alignment, change the way they think. That's number one. Okay, but when it comes to an influential person that is influencing policy, that is influencing what happens in a nation, that is influencing. If God has an agenda that that individual's perspective is contradictory to, the agenda of the king is what's going to transpire. Now, how it's going to transpire and with the degree of difficulty that it transpires, that's the only question. And so as we look at this New administration and we look at the assignment of the church in the kingdom of God we know that Matthew 24 14 has to transpire now whether it transpires under the fire of persecution or whether it transpires under the liberty under the law of liberty that was written in our United States Constitution we don't know we don't know what things we don't know and the other thing is here's what I love about God Beverly what I love about God it's not in me I'm so you know what as I look at the circumstances, I'm really glad that none of the things men tried worked. That none of the things men tried came together. Why? Because that lets us know if God said something, God is big enough, bad enough, bold enough, strong enough. He's got enough power. He's got enough authority. He's got enough wisdom. And he has enough love for all mankind. He loves the, uns the unsaved, those who haven't heard. God loves them as much as he loves you and me. 
God loves the pedophile as much as he loves the child. God, that's what's so amazing about him. He loves us all. And he knows the only salvation for this planet is the king of kings, his son, who he sent. And so God is like, He is. it is his will that none should perish, but that all should come into the knowledge of repentance. Now that means it is God's desire to give all of us access to the knowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord and that he died for you and he wants to save you of your, from your sins and bring you into the kingdom so that you can once again return to the God that created you. You can once again, Pamela, step into your divine, the divine nature, Genesia, so you can once again be the person that God saw when he imagined you in his mind and the you he imagined is not corrupted by the, by the sin nature that about in this earth and by say by coming to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ God is saying I'm bringing you back into alignment with who you were when I imagined you before you were ever corrupted by the nature the sin nature that exists in this earth now here's the thing about that God that's what God that is God's nature God responds to what happens into this earth out of his nature and if more of us could get that and recognize that God's nature his nature is not unrighteousness it is not wickedness it is not evil it is not hate it is not murderous it is justice it is love it is mercy it is grace but just like there's a mercy there's a justice, just like there is a grace. Here's the people on say, I saw this on a pastor and he made it so clear the other day when I watched this video. There, you are in a time of grace. Yes, God is gracious. He is so gracious to give us, to give us a window. But here's the thing about grace. Grace is limited to a time window. You're not going to run out of grace, but all of us are going to run out of time. All of us. And so when it comes to God's agenda, that's why when you keep hearing people say this, they said last year that it was a new era. Era is time bound. And what they were saying to you is that in this window of time, in this last era, we have a sliver. It's the little bit of window of time between the shift of kingdoms. And we're not talking about the kingdom. We're not talking about governmental shift. We're not talking about transition of power from Trump to Biden. That's not the transition of power. This this little thing, this whole window is going to go by so fast. What we are describing and what God is positioning for is the transition of power from this man's era into the kingdom era where Jesus himself will ascend to the throne and he will rule on this earth forevermore and those who are his who have learned the kingdom principles by which we, our lives are to be guided will rule and reign with him and so that's why you don't have the right or the opportunity to tell anybody else what their hi Rex what's up my brother you don't have the right or the responsibility to tell me what my assignment is my overseer now you know if Clarice Fluid gets on here and say Stella you need to sit down somewhere you shouldn't have said that I'll say you mo you know what uh, Apostle Clarice I cause those are, that's 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 one of the people if if Anthony Turner says Stella I heard that word that the other day and and here's what I think you should have said this is how you should have put I'm gonna say yes sir yes sir I will make that correct if Patricia King gets on here and says Stella mm, you might want to be a little softer and she is so inclined to say that to me I'm telling you I've heard it before I've heard Michelle Michelle say to us uh she says, Stella, there are lots of different ways to get your perspective across. Why? Because they are responsible for this call. They have invested in me. They have poured out love in me. Let every person in the kingdom of God have the opportunity and the right to receive the words of life that are earmarked for them and their assignment from the people that God has entrusted to them. Now, if you don't have somebody in your life like that, I'll be happy to tell you there's a great network that you can be a part of. It's the Women in Ministry Network. It's under Patricia King. There's a great online church. If you don't have a church or a church community, it's the Shiloh Fellowship. If you don't have intercession, 
intercessors and people praying for. We've got a group called the, the Kyle Circle Network where we've got intercessors and prayer warriors who are praying. There are people praying for me. What's up, Keisha? There are people, you know, I've got a hub. Keisha, who just popped on here, is a member of my hub. That's a member. That's a four people. There are four people in my inner circle who I am accountable to, who monitor me, who check me, who say, mm, Stella, you know, you, yeah, you need that. I have a tribe. I am the leader of a tribe called the Kyle Circle. If you don't have a tribe, if you don't have a hub, if you don't have an online church or a local church, if you don't have an overseer, a coach, a mentor, a sponsor, get one. Get one. And if you are a person out there thinking it's your responsibility to tell other, if you are not their sponsor, their overseer, their coach, their mentor, if you are not their, uh, if you're not in those things, if you're not in their hub, if you're not in their tribe, if you're not in their circle, leave them alone. Just leave them alone. Because there is an order to things. Let people receive the word of life, the guidance, the direction they need from the people who actually have influence in their lives. Okay, so that's what, so, and, and then the last thing I'm going to mention, because I'm, I'm really almost out of time, I'm going to end this video. So the last thing I want to talk about is I started mentioning it was we are in an era, okay, an era. Now, what many people don't understand, and you guys have heard me before, remember the four quadrants, the four squares. The, it, with the Issachar anointing, there are four ways we get guidance, direction, and instruction um, in in partnership with, but not necessarily controlled by the prophetic anointing, because everybody is not a prophet. Some people will be influenced by the prophetic anointing, and then they use what's called the Issachar anointing to gain deeper insight, even though all of the revelation they are not receiving is not coming from a prophecy. It may be influenced by a prophecy, but it is not all coming from a prophecy because they are not walking in the prophet's office or they are not walking in the prophetic gift. There are many people who don't walk in that office. I, I don't walk in the office of a prophet, although I do have sometimes insight in the realm of the prophetic. My my Issachar anointing is influenced. So the four quadrants. So the first quadrant as a person who is influenced by the Issachar anointing, the Issachar anointing is shaped by times, seasons, and then, so time is a window, Derek. It is a window. So if you want insight and you want to determine where things are going, you get, so the first thing that, you, that the person with that, in, that anointing does is they highly influenced by the word of God. You have to be in the word. So in the first box, if you're looking at a plus sign, you got one, two, three, four, four boxes. The first box is always going to be the word of God. That person spends time in the word to get an idea of what is transpiring so that they can see looking at things through the lens of the word of God, what's happening in the earth. So the Issachar anointing is always shaped first and foremost by the word of God. Okay. The next thing it's going to be shaped by is the Holy Spirit. The word says that the Holy Spirit is going to lead you into truth. It's going to guide you. It's going to show you things to come. It's going to be an indicator in the earth from the inside of you, confirming information that's coming from outside of you. So the Holy Spirit will tell you something and then you'll see it in the word and then you'll see evidence of it in the earth and you'll see the trend of information moving in a direction, okay? The trend of information will move you in a direction. So box one is the word, box two is the Holy Spirit, but then box number three is going to be things that happen in time and season. So that's going to be when you look at the nation of Israel. There are markers in the earth. There are markers in time. Right now, a marker, when we look at what's happening with what's called the Great Reset, that is a prophetic marker in time that agrees with what was stated in Scripture that confirms what was indicated by the Holy Spirit. And now you've got something transpiring in the window. Okay, and then the last thing is going to, so you've got the word of God, you've got the Holy Spirit, you've got events and times, and the last one, now you've got the prophetic. So if a prophecy comes, that comes into alignment with the word of God, the Holy Spirit, 
the alignment of things that need to happen in the earth and the prophetic. Now, you're going to take those four corosinte. You're going to take those four things and not filter them through Trump or Biden, but you're next going to take those four things like a funnel and you're going to filter them through the heart of God. What is the heart of God? What is his passion for man? What does he care about, Joanne? God owns. It is the it is according this one because I God is coming so fast. Slow down. Breathe, Stella. I got to slow down to breathe because it's coming so fast. It's coming to my spirit. It comes into my, okay, this is how stuff hits me, you guys. It will come into my mind. Sometimes it will come into my mind as a, as a tongue. And then my mind translates what comes from the spirit realm, a download into words. And then those words becomes the information that I'm sharing with you. So I have to sometimes slow, sometimes the data, the download is coming so fast. So let me say that again. Let me restate that. There are four quadrants. And this is why you don't need to tell other people what to do. Because you don't know what word of God they've been studying. You don't know what the Holy Spirit has been saying to them. You don't know what time they have spent looking at the prophetic markers. When You, that you don't know that the monetary system is being shifted because you ain't done no homework. You don't know that the dollar that you're looking at is now trying to be consolidated. They're trying to find a way to consolidate the American dollar, the Japanese yen. The, uh, they're trying to find a way to convert all of these different currencies into one. And the only way they can do that is what's called the Great Reset. And so when you look, so now when you're looking at the heart of God, God has already said Matthew 24, 14 has to happen. The gospel must be preached. Why? Because it is the nature of God and the heart of God to give every human being an opportunity. Right now on this earth, statisticians estimate that approximately 40% of the globe has not heard the gospel, which means now, see, I'm looking at the four quadrants. I'm looking at the word of God, Matthew 24, 14. I'm looking at the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit say? The Holy Spirit agrees with the word. He is saying what is coming. He shows you things to come. And so he's saying, pay attention because in the word of God, there is an antichrist spirit that's trying to arise. The Holy Spirit takes that information. Now, you come down here. Quadrant number three, times and seasons. Look at the time and the season. And once you see the time and the season, the things that are happening in the earth, what's happening in the nation of Israel, that's most important right now. The Temple Institute is looking at a red heifer because they need the red heifer to enact the sacrifice so that they can scatter the ashes on the Temple Mount and rebuild the Temple. Why is that important? You're in box number three. Now, we're going to look that is important because the Antichrist in God's timeline, the Antichrist is going to go into a temple that hasn't been built yet. That gives you a freaking idea of how much time we have. And that tells us that if we have that time is constricted or limited by governmental entities that are Antichrist, it would behoove us to now go to box number four, the prophets. What are the prophets saying? And what do the prophets, if, pro, if God said that this is what's supposed to happen and this is who I pick, that's what the prophets said. It's not my responsibility to say, mm, no, mm-mm, that ain't what, no. If, that, if he told me in Second Chronicles 20, 20 to believe the prophets, and be established, you don't get to choose which ones you're going to, well, actually you do. You can choose this day who you're going to serve, who you're going to listen to. So that means you have to go back up to box number two, Holy Spirit, and say, Holy Spirit, is this prophet accurate? Is this prophet online? And if Holy Spirit go, mm-mm, leave him alone. If Holy Spirit go, mm-hmm. He will show you things to come. He will reveal things to you. So that here's the other reason. You don't need to tell other folk what they're doing because you don't know what the Holy Spirit has told them. They are accountable to the word that the Holy Spirit has given them, the instruction he has given them, not you. Not you. Not you. Not you. Your responsibility as a member of the body of Christ is to bring the oxygen cells 
of a word of encouragement, a word of exhortation, a word of comfort, a word of consolation. If you're not exhorting, if you're not comforting, if you're not encouraging, if you don't have something good to say to them, I'm going to say it like I heard it. Shut up and go sit down somewhere. Just saying. That's the truth. Because I could say it nicely and say, you know, it really would be nice if you would probably just withhold your opinion and just let them listen to the Spirit of God that's in them. Yeah, I'll say it that way too. But withhold. Don't judge. Don't stop, stop telling people what you think. They don't need your opinion. They need your prayer. They need your intercession. They need you to partner with Jesus in the throne room and find out what Jesus is praying on their behalf. And you, partner with the Holy Spirit in the throne room, agree with Jesus on their behalf and decree what Jesus is saying over them. If Jesus doesn't give you that insight, it is none of your business. Leave them alone. Now. Those four quadrants govern and guide everything that's transpiring. Let me repeat them because I'm out of time. Number one, the word of God. Box number two. I, and I'm gonna, I'm, I've actually created this as a slide. If you are inside, if you want the slides and access to this information, go and join our network, the Kyle Circle Network. A lot of the content from the teaching materials, I have notes on everything that I teach. I usually have notes for this stuff. If I, have a, if I don't have notes, I have a post. And I'll take that post and convert it into teaching material. And so now I'll take these and then I will use it as teaching material. That teaching material now has a home that people can access. We have a new online community. It's called the Kyle Circle Network. If you will go to my public figure page or go to my personal Stella R. Payton page, at the top of the picture, click on the photograph. You will see a link where it gives you an invitation to join. This group is not for everybody. This community is not a group. It's a community. This community is for end-time warriors who want, to who want to identify strategies, just like those four things those four boxes I just walk you through understanding how the word of God has to be the leading force then the Holy Spirit agrees with the word and then down here you will have you will have to be disciplined to understand the times you'll need to know what's happening you'll need to do research you'll need to understand that uh, Donald Trump's son Kushner has negotiated the most powerful peace treaties for the nation of Israel you'll also understand that one of the first things Joe Biden did was to go in and to try to change what God did through Trump. Now, the last time that happened was five days before Hurricane Katrina hit the United States. When the United States told the nation of Israel that they needed to divide their territory and the nation of Israel agreed and they did it, five days later, Hurricane Katrina hit this country. Don't get it twisted. God loves his nation of Israel and he loves the nation of America and he works with us. But when so much of the church is confused Used because they don't know box one, box two, box three, and box four. They don't know what their real responsibility is. And so they're online trying to tell people who do their homework, who know their responsibility, who spend time in prayer, who spend time in the word, who spend time in intercession, who go into the throne room on a regular basis going, Jesus, what do I need to pray today for you? What do I need to decree and release into the earth on your behalf? Who don't know, who pray in the Holy Ghost sometimes out. Still, you trying to tell us what to do because you don't know nothing. And then you try to tell me, well, those very people who are abortionists and those that, yeah, God cares about them too, but it doesn't change the fact that he has issued a judgment and he has decreed a law and he has outlined that law in the word of God that's saying that there is a penalty for sacrificing your children to Molech, Baal, and Asherah. And anybody who comes into alignment with that demon, you are not on the side of the kingdom. You confused. Now, I ain't going to come tell you that. If you're smart, you'll watch this video for yourself and act accordingly. Because no human being should have the right to suck a baby out and let that baby be born. A nine-month-old baby, let it be born, and then you stick something in its brains and suck the brain out and take the body and harvest the organs and do all kind of twisted stuff with it. That is wicked. So don't tell me 
I need to come into agreement and support. I can't. How, how can the only thing you can pray for that is for the person's heart? I started out by saying number one, Lord, change their heart. If they won't change, Amanda. Number two, Lord, move them out the way. Move them, God. Move them so you can give them some more time to change their heart. Okay. But if they won't change and they won't move, the next option is they kill them. You got to deal with them. Now, where do you see that in scriptures? Look at who walked with Jesus. Jesus had 12 apostles. 11 of those apostles were genuine. Judas was twisted. Judas had his own agenda. And Judas walked with Jesus the whole time, all the way up to the very end. <clears throat> And the entire time he walked with Jesus, he had the opportunity to change his heart. He did not. He didn't change. In addition, not only would he not change, when Jesus preached and the 5,000 with him, with him, then they, okay, then it dropped down to 500. And then when Jesus preached again and he said that you got to eat my, drink my blood and eat my flesh and people, they were offended. And so a big, another big crowd of them left. Then it dropped down from 500 down to 70 and then it dropped down from 70. And so now Jesus had the 12 apostles. Judas could have left with the 70. He could have left with the 500. He could have left with the 5,000. He chose to stay and Jesus knew the whole time that what Jesus was about. And even though Jesus never kicked him out, he ne and that's why when the word of God says, let the tares grow up with the wheat. And in the end, he says, now you're going to take the tares out and you're going to burn them. Now notice the tares were dealt with before the wheat was harvested. He said, then he says, I'm going to, so now if, if you're going to use that as a paradigm and I'm not sure, this is just revelation and insight that I am just coming into and I'm praying into it. And so, but this makes sense to me so that if there are, here's, here, oh God saying, oh, here's what came to me a few days ago. The Lord gave, now this goes back to the, remember the four quadrants, the word of God, the Holy Spirit. The, um, the, the timeline events that are happening and then the prophetic words. Okay. Now this is what came to me the other day. I heard a prophetic word that had been that where the pastor was saying, the preacher was saying that God is opening a window where he is going to deal with the principalities, Leslie, that have blinded people's eyes and prevented them from seeing the truth that have blinded people's eyes and prevented them from sensing the very thing. The Oh God, thank you, Jesus. That has prevented them from changing the way they think because God loves us. And it is the goodness of God that leads us to change the way they think. So the very forces that have prevented people from seeing, identifying with, and connecting with the goodness of God, those principalities, powers, and rulers of the darkness, the, the, one of the things that he said was, that, that the prophet said was, that God was going to constrain those spirits so that the people would have the things that have blocked their capacity to see removed. Now, that agreed with something the Lord had put in my heart years ago to decree over the United States of America. One of my consistent prayers has been is that God, remember, four quadrants, word of God, Holy Spirit. What is Holy Spirit saying to you? This is something that the Holy Spirit had been saying to me. And then number three, the timeline of events. We know we only have a window to get people into the kingdom. And then number four is the word of prophecy that is being spoken. So these things need to agree. So now with that level of insight, we funnel those things and you see it through the lens of the love of God. Well, what does the love of God look like? It is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Now, now, if something is in the way blocking people from seeing the goodness of God that is trying to lead them into repentance, that thing needs to be removed so that the tears, that thing is a tear, that thing that's blocking people from seeing what the goodness of God looks like, that's blocking people from seeing that God loves the pedophile, that God loves the homosexual, that God loves the, loves the lesbian, that God loves the straight just like he loves the gay, and that he wants all of 
of them. He wants everyone to see the wholeness of his love for them. The overwhelming kindness and the abundance of his mercy for all mankind. And if he can get them to see it, then they have the power. And so my prayer has been for years for the United States of America. Lord, engineer circumstances where every American, all 300 and something million of us, will have the opportunity, Pamela, to see who Jesus is unhindered by demonic influences so that that individual can come into the knowledge of Christ themselves without being, without barriers blocking their ability to see who Jesus is. So when that prophet said that the other night and I watched the video, Holy Spirit brought my prayer, number two, number four, the prophet prophesied it, which made me jump back up to box number two. What did the Holy Spirit say? Holy Spirit said, this is what you've been praying, Stella. And then the Holy Spirit says, now go to the word. What does the word say? The Lord says, it is the will of God that none should perish, but that all should come into the knowledge of repentance. The knowledge of repentance means means that they should come into information that gives them the necessary courage, strength, tenacity, ability, capacity, awareness to receive Jesus as Christ and Lord, and that nothing, no factor. So the tears have to be removed from the way so that the harvest can come in. Now, here's the operative question. What is and who are the tares? That's the question. So now you have to ask yourself, based on God's agenda, God's priorities, God's passion, and God's heart, God's love for mankind, what are the tares? And which leaders will actually give God permission to make that transpire? Or which leaders will be, are sent by the spirit of Antichrist to stop it? A or B? Now, here's the thing. If it's God, just like the May, when they were trying to stop the apostles from preaching the gospel in Jerusalem, and they went to the, I believe it was the, the, the Sanhedrin, and I think his name was Garlemeo, Gar, 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 somebody find that scripture and post it for me. That, and Garlemeo told him, he said, look, y'all leave them alone. He said, because you know, if, you, you know, if, if, they, if they wrong, God will shut them down. If, if, if the people who've been praying and still believing and holding fast, hoping that what we saw, you know what we saw we know what we saw during that election we know what we saw I know what I saw and I know God is just God tolerates wickedness but he facilitates righteousness God will tolerate your sin for a season, but recognize this, all sin has a payday, but he facilitates righteousness. He supports righteousness. Now, whether you realize it or not, I don't know what's going to happen. All I know is when God decides he has had enough, he don't need no electors. When God decides he has had enough, he don't need Donald Trump. When God decides he has had enough, when people are in the way of getting his agenda done, Pharaoh was in the way of getting the agenda of God managed. God had told the children of Israel he was going to bring them out. And Pharaoh was in the way. He, God didn't, he didn't, he didn't need, to, he, look, he didn't need the children of Israel to deal with Pharaoh. He said, y'all just go on. I tell, he said, y'all, y'all going to run down there. I'm going to move this water out the way. Run on down there to the Red Sea. Put your foot in the water. When you touch the edge of the water, the water going to move. Moses obeyed God, did what God told him, put his foot and raised his hand to stand, put his foot in the water, and the people walked across on dry ground. Now, I personally believe that the same God who can part a Red Sea and move people across, if he has an agenda in this earth where there are 40% of this planet that has not heard the gospel and there are tears in the way that need to be moved, at, take out, let, let them grow up together. We've been watching the Republicans, the Democrats, all of the tears been growing up together. For all this time, we thought we had a Democratic Party and a Republican Party 
the wheat and the tares been growing up together, baby. They've been growing up together. And the Lord said, let them grow up. He said, and at the end, I'm going, you're going to know which ones are tares and which ones are, he said, now, we know who the tares are. Some of them, the tares were not Republicans or Democrats. The, the tares were wicked. They're wicked. All of them. <clears throat> I'm just saying. I'm probably most all of them. Now, God is at the point, and this is where we don't, it's not our responsibility to make this happen. This is why you don't need to be on somebody else's page telling them what they need to be saying, what they, unless the Holy Spirit gives you that instruction and you are there as the overseer. You need to leave folk alone, because just like Gal, Gal, Galileo, or whatever his name was, told, it, told the people in the Sanhedrin, he says, you may find yourself fighting against God, and you don't even know it, because you ain't been in box number one with the word. You ain't been in box number two praying in the Holy Ghost. You haven't been in box number three researching the timelines of the events in the earth, knowing what happens with Israel, knowing what the Word of God says in Revelations about the spirit of the Antichrist, knowing what the three, the red heifer is, knowing the timelines in the temple. You ain't done none of that. And so you're going to come on somebody else's page thinking you could tell them what to do now. Go somewhere and sit down. And then last but not least, you choose to believe the ears of man instead of believing the prophets of God. I would rather believe a prophet from 1979 who was in the nation of Italy, a Catholic priest who God gave a revelation to in, in, in 1979, I would rather, which agrees with another prophecy that was released in 2007, which agrees with another prophecy that was released in 2014, which agrees with, th I would rather believe them than believe you. Why? Because what they say agrees with box number one. It confirms what was said in box number two, Holy Spirit, which comes into alignment with what needs to happen in the earth. Box number three, the events of time, which agrees with what the prophets are saying in box number four. And when I filter all of that through the heart of God and his passion and his love for mankind and his desire to see people brought into salvation. Now, that's who I'm going to believe. I ain't going to believe you. That's who I'm going to believe. That's who I'm going to believe. I'm going to believe this. I'm going to believe the funnel of the heart of God. And I'm going to believe that funnel based on the four quadrants of God's design for giving you insight. Whether you are prophet or whether you just Joe believer who wanting to know, God, I just want to know what I need to do today. Yeah. He will give you that level of insight. And we must, yet yeah, you're absolutely right, Jackie. You funnel it through the heart of God, which is the nature of God rolled. His nature, his character, and his ways are shaped by his heart and his love for mankind. And his heart and love for mankind right now, the number one thing on God's agenda is to get the gospel out and win souls and bring people in. He said, but before that, ha that can happen, the tares have to be removed. The tares that have grown up with the wheat have to be removed so that the people who've been blinded by the enemy can see who the Savior is. Now, this is just my limited understanding. In fact, I'm going to share this video with one of my sponsors and say, does this make sense to you? You know, because this is what I'm sensing. This is what I'm hearing. You know, if I'm wrong, y'all tell me. You can't tell me. They can tell me. But if, if, if the tares, if the tares are in actuality, those spiritual forces that has prevented people. And here's the thing. The tares are everywhere. The tares, you're right. You're right, Nicole. The tares are in the, the, the tares are in church folk are tares, political folk are tares. <laughs> tares are everywhere. Tares are everywhere, just like the weed is everywhere. And so God is saying the tares have to be moved so that the harvest can be gathered into God's barns. And then once the harvest is gathered in, it's just like it says in Matthew 24, 14. He says, then the end shall come. And that's why we know. And there are, now I could, there are so many other prophetic, there are so many other markers in the natural. That's why the great reset, the great reset is so, so significant. And I believe the great reset is going to be delayed because it is trying to come ahead of schedule. I believe that we, I am praying that we get another four year window. I don't see us being here much longer. Now I'm not saying that I am not saying that, that, that Jesus is coming back in four years. That is not what I'm saying. What I am saying is when you look in box number one and read the word, 
When you look in box number two and pray in the Holy Ghost, the sense of, the word tells me this is what's happening in God's prophetic timeline. Read Revelations. Number two, the Holy Spirit says this is what's happening by the heart of God. And I'm going to let you know and I'm showing you what's coming right now. And then I go down to box number three and I look at uh, Kushner, Donald Trump's son-in-law, doing the peace, tr the peace, tr uh, a piece of peace accords in the Middle East. That's huge. When I go to research the, the Temple Institute in the Nation of Israel, reading about what they are doing to get ready to sacrifice the red heifer, if it if all comes into order, that means there's nothing else in the way to stop them from building the temple, the very temple that the Antichrist is going to go in. That lets us know once that transpires, there is, if you are pre, mid, or post-tribulation, that lets you know that is the start of a seven-year time clock. Now, that being the case, and this is 2021, again, I'm using the four boxes. I'm not prophesying. I'm just using the four boxes to help you understand where you at on the roadmap of time. If we use that as a four boxes, then that lets us know that we have a window of somewhere around 10 years. Here's another one. God, I'm running out of time, but I'm telling you. The word also says that the generation that sees the nation born in a day, would be the generation. That was April, no, 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 May 14th. The nation of Israel was established in Jeru back in Jerusalem. Again, I think it was May 14th, 1948. A generation is 80 years. If you count 80 years from that window, 80-year window ends in 2030. Okay? Now, again, am I telling you when Jesus is coming? No, I'm not. But I am telling you this. The word says we don't know the day nor the hour. The reason you don't know the day nor the hour is that there are 24 time zones and the day and the hour will be different for everybody on the planet because the time zones are different. There are 24 different time zones. So 8 o'clock, 9, uh, 9 a.m. on Friday is not in, in Hattiesburg, Mississippi is not going to be 8 o'clock, 9 a.m. In, in New Zealand. That's why we don't know the day nor the hour. But he did say, discern the times and the seasons. We get to discern. That means we get to look at, mm, you know, it's a big gray cloud out there. And by the sound of that thunder, <clears throat> 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Oh, there's a lightning bolt. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. Boom! Light thunder. That lets me know, just like we learned in elementary school, that a thunder, uh, a lightning flash will gen was generated by, a, a, by, a, by friction in the cloud. And the lightning flash created the friction, which released the sound. The lightning moves faster than the sound wave. So when I look at my watch and go 1,000, 2,000, 3, I am counting the seconds between when that storm that flashed that lightning about how many miles it is from me and how much time I got to get in the house. And what I'm saying to you guys today, the four quadrants that I showed you today, I've never heard anybody teach it. It's going to be inside the network. I'll create the, I've created the model. I'm going to put it in the network and then you can use this video go back and study it the video will be inside the network as well you can study it and then you can stop now you got something to tell you based on 1000 2000 boom there goes the thunder about how much time we got left here that's how times seasons and era work you don't just it's, it's, it's like god not god god is god god he said it's not his desire to surprise anything he does come like a thief in the night but one thing you can know about God is that he, he's already said that you won't take the people, his, his, he tells his prophets what's going to happen. And if he says, I'm not going to do anything in the earth without telling my prophets, I don't think the end time, the end time season is any different. Just like he told the 10 virgins, y'all need to go over there and be in the house and make sure you got enough oil and you got enough and you got your lamps. So what I'm saying to you now, God is saying the I'm getting, I'm telling the, I'm telling my ten virgins, I'm moving the tares, I'm getting y'all out the way, and I'm telling you, I'm getting ready to gather my wheat into the barns. I'm getting ready to pull the wheat in the house, so that when he comes, you'll be ready. That's where we are, and that's why you use the four quadrants, the Word of God, the Holy Spirit, 
the events and times, timeline markers, and then the prophetic words, you funnel those through the heart of God, the love of God, the goodness of God, and then you characterize that with the nature of God. And then you can make a determination on whether who ought to be in the White House. Because <laughs> right now, it really don't matter. What matters now is we're at the point where if God has something that he is not happy with, just like he parted the Red Sea and drowned Pharaoh's army, God can deal with whoever's in his way of getting a tear. God can move the... Pharaoh was a tear. God moved them out of the way so that the children of Israel could be gathered into the new land that God had predestined for them. Look, God don't need nobody. Look, when... when mm, God is big enough. He can open the earth and let folk fall in it. Okay? He has done it before. Folk who did not do what he needed, he just said, I had enough of you. He opened the earth and the earth swallowed them up. He done it before. So look, it don't matter what you think. You think God can't move? You think God, that folk walk up, Ananias and Sapphira think they got something. They're walking in the temple thinking they're going to do one thing. God said, oh, no, you don't. They drop dead right on the spot. God can speak for himself. And that's where we are. And here's why I think that is significant, Lynn. Welcome. The reason I think that is significant is because if God moves in a way where he reveals his nature of love and his his, his unending passion for mankind. He loves mankind and he doesn't want any to perish and he wants everybody to have the opportunity to come into the knowledge of repentance. He will do, he will literally move hell and high water to get to those people and he will move anything and anybody that's in the way and he'll do it himself. He don't need Donald Trump to do it. He don't need Joe Biden to do it. He don't need no electors to do it. God will move himself. And when he moves himself, the whole earth will fear. Just like when the nation of Israel walked through that water and they came on dry ground and they came, he said, once they got to the other side, the, all the nations on the other side of the Red Sea feared God. That's where God is going. He says, I'm going to do something in a way or I'm going to put the fear of God in these people myself. And they see my nature, my character, my ways, my love for them. And that's where you get a Rahab. That's how you get a Rahab. Pulled out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son and brought into the very lineage of Jesus Christ himself. That's where we are. That's where we are. So I'm done. I'm going to shut. Oh, gosh, I'm, I'm way over time. I want to say thank you guys so much for being on here today. Do me a favor. Share this video because this is for those folk who think they need to be telling other people what to do. No, you don't. If you don't know the four quadrants, if you've never been exposed to the heart of God, if you've never been in a throne room partnering with Jesus, praying in the Holy Ghost, agreeing with Jesus and what he says over people, it's like go somewhere and sat down. If you've never studied the nature, the ways, and the character of God, knowing that God will always advance his agenda out of his nature, his ways, his character, his passion, his love for mankind. And he said, go ahead, let the tares grow up with the wheat because I'm going to get my wheat, but I can't get my wheat while the tares are in the way. So what you have seen these last few weeks is you've been seeing the, you've been seeing tares. Now we're going to see what God going to do with the tares. How is he going to deal with them? He says, you gather the tares and put them in the fire. Burn them up. Mm, ooh, just heard a thunderbolt. Wow. 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 <laughs> you guys, I love it. I love it. I love you. Make sure you send a request to join the Kyle Circle Network. If you want the notes from today's session, make sure you are in the network. You are in the network. You are in the network. We love you. And until next Friday, you make it a terrific day. Bye-bye.